Hi there. So welcome to episode two of Weird Shit. Um, this time I'm going to do a uh, little bit about dynamic paint, why I love it. Um, but I'm actually going to use an example of something I've created before uh, to show you how I did it and how I use sort of um, all this stuff uh, as procedurally as possible to get some interesting results. So the um, thing I'm referring to is actually this is something that I uh, put up on Instagram. You can have a look at it there uh, if you want. Um, now, we're not going to be making the exact same thing, but I'm going to show you the theory and the technique behind it because uh, a lot of people seem quite interested in it. So I figured I'd do a, a weird shit episode about it. So that paused. Um, I'm going to start with a round cube. Like I said, I love these objects. Um, you know, I've talked about them a little bit in the previous episode. Uh, if you haven't seen that, watch that for sure because uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to use some of the techniques that I talked about before. So First thing I'm going to do is actually create a displace, uh, add in a texture, and just make it something simple. Cloud should do fine. Um, might tweak it a little bit later if I have to. So maybe tweak the size a bit and the contrast. So there we go. Bring down the strength. All right, awesome. Now I'm going to create a second uh, round cube, and this is actually where we're going to uh, add, our, add our effect onto. So again, subsurf it up um, and set it to smooth. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to scale it down a little bit. So when we up the strength here, we actually have a few bits and bobs sticking through. Why I'm doing this will become clear fairly soon, but I'm going to not rename this just yet, but I'm going to hide the second one. So first thing we want to do is something that I showed in the last video as well. I just want to loop this really quickly. Um, so I'm going to add in a circle, scale it up a little bit, add in an empty, again, set it in the middle. Um, and then I'm going to add a constraint to this to follow the Bezier circle. And I'm doing it on the Bezier circle, which isn't going to work. I'm going to have to do it on this one. There we go. Basic circle. So now I can offset this fairly quickly. Um, what happens if we add this into our displace? I'll show you really quickly. If I set this to the empty, so the object that's moving around, uh, again, you can see this moving around and you can see the, uh, the object changing shape. So we're going to do that. Loop it. Set this to zero. Hit I and then one frame after our last frame, set this to 100. There we go. So, sorry I had to sit through that again if you saw the first episode, but it's just so we have something to work with. Uh, then I'm gonna add the second one. So, what the hell am I doing now? Uh, some of you might be wondering. Well, actually I'm just setting all this up so we can use it for uh, dynamic paint, which is what this episode is all about. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add a dynamic paint canvas. So we actually want to paint on this object and I'm going to set it to weight um, and nothing's really happening. So far you can see there's no, no weight just yet, but it looks, uh, you know, looks nice and blue indicating that there's zero weight all over the object. So the second thing we need to do, actually I'm going to name this now, I'm going to call this mesh, uh, not displace, call strokes maybe, and then call this one paint so we know we're using that first mesh that's moving around to paint so I'm going to add a dynamic paint here as well and set this to brush and add a brush so what's going to happen now actually the movement of this displaced uh, object is going to start painting our final object which is really cool so you get these really nice results now I don't want to do volume I want to do uh, volume and proximity and then bring down the paint distance just a little bit and you can see we get these really interesting uh, maps being painted. Obviously, it's not going to do anything during rendering. Uh, I'm sorry, I tend to press rendering every now and again. It's it's a force of habit. Um, so what we're going to do now is with this setup, actually go into this one and uh, make sure that our dynamic paint is in uh, before our displace. Otherwise, this effect isn't going to work. Add a new texture. And we haven't set up the, um, the output yet. So 
by default, dynamic paint actually outputs into this vertex group called DB weight. So I'm just going to add that in here. Uh, we are, if you call it the same thing, then it actually immediately start working. Now, sometimes you have to reset to uh, your first frame of your animation. Otherwise, the dynamic paint will bug out a bit and it won't always work. So keep that in mind when you're when you're using it. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this uh, vertex group it should be in here. Ah, I put it in the wrong one, of course. There we go. I'm going to throw this one out to avoid confusion. Actually, no, I was doing it right. There we go. I need to add it in here. There we go. And this is awesome. Um, so now I'm going to hide the paint layer and you'll see exactly what's going on. So you get the mesh is sort of being eaten away. Um, again, this is the, the opposite of what I was doing. So I'll show you how to, how to flip it around in a minute. This is really, really cool. So this is the first step of getting that effect. And you do some crazy interesting things with this. I mean, uh, imagine if you have to do some kind of VFX or whatever, uh, you could do this on a face where the face gets sort of eaten away. Um, things like that. Uh, I don't know, it sounds pretty gruesome, but you know, this is the type of work that you do in VFX. Now, one of the things that I want to do is actually uh, go into my strokes and add a fade. So I'm going to add a fairly quick fade. And what this does is we'll actually, as you can see, it will fade the map. So these are going to start pushing out again. So now you get this really, really interesting result uh, that does some super cool stuff. Now, what we want to do as well is set this to less, uh, no, of course, 240. So to get a perfect loop out of this, um, you actually have to do the, uh, the dynamic paint sort of twice, because uh, if then I'm going to do 120 to 140, uh, 240 or 121, it should technically work, but there's nothing really going on now. Now, the reason for that is our paint mesh so the one we're actually using to uh, displace only has animation looping until frame 120. So I'm going to go back in. Where are we? Oh, zooming in on the wrong thing. Bring this up a little bit and change this to the graph editor. So if we select this, actually, if we select the empty, you'll see, um, you can see the uh, offset being animated here of our original um, constraint. So what we can do is uh, we can see the offset moving around. Now a really, really easy way of doing this is by adding in modifiers. Um, this is changed in 2.78. I believe it's got its own little little tab now, which is awesome. Uh, and then we're going to hit cycles. Now this has nothing to do with the render engine. This just cycles your um, keyframes over and over again. And if we set both of these as repeat with offset, you'll see now we only have to animate it once, but it'll loop into infinity. Now, why am I doing all this, you might ask? So that our paint mesh has actually moved already. And if we go to our strokes, and I'm going to set this back to one to make it easier now. And turn off the paint mesh again. We can see that once we pass 121, it will actually become a perfect loop because it's already ha it already has the previous motion of the um, the paint mesh moving around. So that's how to create a perfect loop with that. So you'd set it to 121. But first thing we want to do, no, again, making a mistake here. Uh, I'm going to save this, save this as So this file, uh, like the last one, will be available for download as well. There we go. Um, the reason I'm doing this is so I can actually cache my dynamic paint, uh, which is a lot, you know, quicker. So I don't have to. I have to recalculate it every frame. And uh, the cool thing is, then we could actually set it to 121 and you can see the perfect loop. So I'll bake this very quickly. And there we go. That's that done. Uh, and now if I were to set my start frame to 121, 
There we go. Go to the start and loop it. It should loop perfectly now in theory. So let's see if it actually does. Yep, it does. There we go. So now we're still getting the, the inverse effect. And if you've watched the previous episode, you'll know uh, what the next thing is I'm going to do here. I'm going to add the vertex weight edit, which is a really cool modifier because um, you can start with a certain vertex weight at the top of your modifier list and you can modify it as you go along and use it for different effects and different things. So again, I'm going to set this to the, uh, the weight paint. And what I'm going to do is use custom curve because it allows me to flip it over. So now you can see we're actually sort of getting that paint effect. Um, you usually have to turn on group add um, to sort of, how should I say this, uh, to eliminate sort of any artifacts you might have. I found that this adds it in a better way. Um, and yeah, you can you can really control your the flipping of that, that curve a lot better with it. So there you go. Um, it's similar, obviously, if I were to change the, uh, the paint layer to be a little more frantic, then we'll get a better result or a closer result to the original. So let's see um, if I were to change the displace on this and make the size a little bit smaller. So we get a lot more detail in there and a lot more different ones. Obviously, what we'll have to do is we'll have to rebake our cache. But that's all right. It doesn't take all that long, which is really nice. So upon first opening this file, you might actually have to bake uh, bake the cache. I don't think I'll add it with it. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're watching, uh, just to hit bake at the bottom of the dynamic paint. So there we go. By changing this now, you see we've got a lot more detail and we've got a lot more things going on. And actually we can add another modifier onto this, whether it be a smooth, for example, you can get a lot more organic looking things or um, just add some subdivision surface modifiers as well. So this is basically the um, the way I did that effect. Uh, so it gives you, you know, some really interesting controls and obviously dynamic paint, it doesn't just work with meshes, it also works with, um, with the particle system on the mesh. So it's definitely something to check out and do some really cool things with. So there we go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this second episode. Um, and again, if there's other things or, you, or there's certain artwork or whatever you want me to uh, sort of debunk, I guess, just let me know. I'd be happy to do more episodes like these on that kind of stuff. So, all right. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.